they gave about 200 euros um you know child allowance and that's not like the only thing like for people that are not even working if you're in the system and you're not working you're looking for a job and you haven't found a job there's a welfare payment for you where they give you about 350 euros per week and this is per week i didn't say monthly this is per week. yes and this goes on for as as long as you don't have a job until you get a job they are helping people so you're not just going to be on the street and you're not just going to be left stranded if you don't have where to get the money from they actually help you regardless of whether you're a student today is the d day we compare the republic of ireland and the uk yes i know a lot of you looking to relocate have been confused of which country to migrate to most of you come to ask me, Clara, should I go to UK or is Republic of Ireland the best? Where should I go to? Which is more cheaper? Which is more like, uh, you know, like able to give us the good life we are coming to the Western world for, you know? So guys, I have a very special guest today, like our celebrity YouTuber, Gloria <laughs> of Ria <Real> State. <laughs> Get the clap. <laughs> so you all know her now. I don't even need to introduce her. I, I think she doesn't even need to introduce herself. Uh -huh. So she's the one and only like immigration content creator. Like I've seen, no, I don't know about you, but I've seen on the streets of YouTube that does this whole island immigration and the rest. So Ria, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shy stuff. Hi guys, my name is Gloria, but you can call me Ria. I'm a YouTuber here on the streets of YouTube, like Clara has said. I have a YouTube channel called Ria Sticks where I talk about everything that has to do with you know migrating to Ireland via work, via school, how to settle, how to live, how to migrate, how to get like the budget friendly things, everything that has to do with Ireland, definitely I am your plug. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. She's our plug, Like, honestly, <laughs> I don't think I've seen any other person on YouTube that does this whole island stuff. I don't yeah, think. I've, been, I've barely seen I know a couple of people that used to do it before, but they've stopped as well. So I've, I've barely actually seen people that do it as well. Well, I think you're the only one I know for now. <laughs> I know I'm not wrong. So, guys, we are comparing UK, our UK, UK. <laughs> and island like you all yeah. know in uk northern ireland to be precise and she is in dublin right yes of ireland dublin <laughs> so guys today we'll be comparing which is better when i mean which is better in terms of cost of living mm -hmm. accommodation mm -hmm. bills tax and a lot more so i think we should start with the uk Okay. okay so uk now in terms of cost of living i think it has skyrocketed over the last year as the last year there's been a lot of back and forth with all this oh cost of living this blah 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 but one thing i like about the uk government is that they tend to consider their citizen their resident that is people here generally and they try to make it um bearable even though there is spike in the cost of living and everything like recently they sent like an allowance six six hundred pounds allowance to each household mm. okay so you know you just try and then keep body and soul together use it for their gas use it for their lights so for ireland do your government do the same or are you guys just left to be on the wall by yourself <laughs> I think the island actually even does better than UK, to be honest. Really? Yes, I'll explain. So when COVID oh, happened... No, I was years, feeling by UK, yeah. <laughs> no, island is the better bet. Let's not go there. But when COVID <laughs> happened in 2020, um, mm. so for those that stopped working, if you were laid off or even if you didn't want to work at all because you were scared of the COVID, um, mm. the government, whoever you are, whether you were a student, whether you were a resident, whatever, mm. the government was giving about 350 euros Per week wow and they did this for months for months and even up until now for people that let's say are having difficulties with there's the i think like a few weeks ago they gave about 200 euros um you know child allowance and that's not like the only thing like for yeah. people that are not even working if you're in the system and you're not working you're looking for a job and you haven't found a job there's mm -hmm. a welfare payment for you where they give you about 350 euros per week and this is per week i didn't say monthly this is per week. yes 
And this goes on for as as long as you don't have a job until you get a job. Wow. Okay. Yes, exactly. In regards to like you know generally giving, like the other day, um, they gave five hundred euros to everyone that's renting a place. So that's literally to everyone that's living in Ireland. So just mm-hmm. reduce your rental you know expenses they give each person 500 you have to apply for it anyways but like they approved and give everyone 500 euros so these are like little things that we used to say that government actually you know consider their residents they actually look after us they are helping people so you're not just going to be on the street and you're not just going to be left stranded if you don't have where to get the money from they actually help you regardless of whether you're a student or I was about to ask you that <laughs> yeah so mm-hmm. yeah that's that's actually wow. one of the things, yeah. In UK, yeah, and there's a section like students now students, not allowed yeah. to claim some kind of benefit, you know. Because I like myself, in 2020, I was a student and I actually oh. went and like I got that benefit and they've never come back to say, oh yeah, because you were a student, you have to give us back or you are being restricted to get a particular yeah. visa because you have benefited from yeah. the government. No, when I was a student in 2020, I was receiving three fifty per week for let's say about two to three months. Wow! Yeah, it's like I think after this video, I would be planning to relocate to Ireland. <laughs> I mean, I need mean, the benefits, child benefit, and the rest. <laughs> so, guys, you've earned aside when it comes to you know, should I say benefit or the government supporting it? citizen when i mean citizen i'm talking about everybody in general be it you are here on a permanent um, residency you are here as a student or whatever but as long as you are in the country okay so now we'll be talking about when it comes to bills like i said bills talking about it alone my head is already turning (laughs) (laughs) the amount i used this month alone no jokes in buying one or two groceries or that food and this and I just sat down, I was thinking of my life. Is this UK really what it? What am I really doing here? So in terms of bills, eh? Yeah. We spend a lot here. A lot here, which is which is even cheaper. When I tell people, some of my friends are saying in England, because I am in Northern Ireland, they'll be like, that's nothing, you know. So in terms of bills, I spend roughly about five hundred thousand, no, five hundred pounds in a month. That is, I'm talking about the grocery lot, though. Alone, oh, the grocery. Not, I'm not talking of um, lights and, you oh, know. Oh, just for what? Yeah, I'm just, I'm telling you the grocery folks. <laughs> 500. <laughs> so, I'm telling you. So, I think because I eat a lot, we eat a lot, my family eats a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, your family as well, yeah. You know, so, I think. And one thing about me, I do book um, purchase. I don't yeah. go, I don't even have the time to be going to shop one after the other, though. Mm. So when I'm buying food, I buy it at once. So what I do, there's a term I use, or oh, you bought food, you know, this that food here, yeah. let's yeah. say 200 pounds, and African food, which is more expensive, I use them um, 300 pounds. So what about you? You know, I know you live alone, you know, oh, so yes. I think you yes, lesser. Exactly. Oh, God. Yeah, but I'm envying you right now. I wish I lived alone. <laughs> I see. So, like, a few months ago, but I used to live alone. But now, I'm actually living, like, in a shared apartment with some other people. So, I'm mm-hmm. going to be breaking it down according to my life right now. Okay? So, currently, just for rent, um, I pay 500 People, when I say this, they come for me. Like, I put up a video some, some days ago saying that I pay 500 as my rent in Dublin. And a lot of people were saying, ah, are we in the same Dublin? Are you here? We are you sure you're in Dublin? Yeah. And I'm just I think like, it's yes. expensive in a shared flat, 500. Yes. Only and your own like, quarter. Oh, maybe the room is small, or maybe like the house is old. And all of these are like valid mm-hmm. reasons. That's why you probably say I'm paying 500. But not entirely true. I know mm-hmm. people that are paying like 650 in a studio, like in a studio. Wow. They are paying 700 in a studio, including bills. So you just have to be like, just because you're paying. I would like put it just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's quality you know yeah. there's some people that would be able to find the cheap ones and it will still be okay for them do you understand mm-hmm. so yeah so for my bills i pay 500 for um that's for rent rather for electricity and gas mm-hmm. that one is very expensive the only reason that is actually like i'm benefiting it now is because i'm in a shared apartment when i used to live alone my rent was 800 in a studio what yes aside mm-hmm. from bills 
<laughs> that's like exactly. that's about you know paying for three bedroom flats exactly in, in northern and ireland with change <laughs> and you know and that was actually one of the cheapest rents you will see if you're going to live alone here like in all of this very quality modern houses you should be paying at least like one six one five two thousand for a studio or like one bedroom apartment i'm not even kidding people pay that amount for just one room and then when i used to live alone my bills for electricity and gas was standard 200 per month Jeez. so you could see that 800 for rent and then 200 for electricity okay. and bills 1k one, about, that's about one two now exactly in a month for just um what's what electricity and then gas and then your rent but now sharing with other people in the house my rent is lesser and then my bills is also lesser so i could pay less maybe a hundred or maybe 150 for two months for electricity yeah. and bill do you understand so at the same yeah. time it also depends on the kind of lifestyle you sort of want to live mm -hmm. when you're here exactly okay and then groceries as well no feeling is actually quite expensive everyone knows that even down to like the yeah. cheapest grocery store we used to have like Lidl and Audi they are actually now expensive talk more of like even the African store and I'm like you so I do like bulk purchase mm -hmm. when I'm buying so if I spend like let's say 300 euros on just myself to do bulk purchase you can I can like because it's just me I know how to manage right and yeah. I know that I cannot just finish everything that I have bought in a month. Like I do yeah. meal prep and all of that. So if I spend like, let's say 300 in a month for just me, the next month I could be spending, let's say 150 because maybe I want to buy like maybe extra rice or just milk or whatever. Yes. So at okay. the same time, and me, so I'm going on a weight loss journey. So <laughs> <laughs> I need to put so much money in feeding as well. So, but yeah, you could actually spend, give or take roughly in a month between 150 to 300 for wow, just yourself for feeding not bad as as a single person single it could be person. less and it could be more it just depends on like what you want to eat mm -hmm. you get and the stores that you buy your food in so for example here in ireland if you buy your 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 food in like or things to prepare your food in like let's say super value or m&s mm -hmm. you obviously tend to pay more as compared yeah. to if you go to like lido or aldi I think yeah. it's the same with the UK, you know, if you go to m and and the rest, it's like you're going yeah. to this big madam shop, you know. Me, I go to my Iceland, just like that, <laughs> to go out in the way. In fact, I look for the ones that say, bonus, now what, three pounds, now three what, ten. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel sharp. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So, but I think I, I, I'm actually liking the island. You know, like I told you before, I had a conversation with you previously. You know, I have like families and friends in um, Dublin, and I could easily go from Northern Ireland to Dublin almost every week. Northern Ireland to any part of the island. Like if I'm even looking to go like on a week weekend get away with my family, we mostly go to Ireland, any part of the island. This is because it's more easier for us to assess than going to London and the rest. You know, and when I'm saying this, people are like, but you're in the UK now, why are you going to Ireland? Let me bust a bubble now. Do you know I do my African shopping in Dundalk? All I of my African shopping in Dundalk. No, so you see me in Dundalk every month shopping. This is not because we don't have African store in the UK yet. Yeah? But I think I'm in, I'm in Northern Ireland, if you get what I'm trying to say now. Yeah. And if I say, okay, let me go to Belfast. Northern Ireland, though, let me go to Belfast. That's the city now of Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. It takes me about one hour plus. But going to Dundalk from where I live in Northern Ireland it takes me 45 minutes. So I rather go to Dundalk. And when I compare prices in terms of prices and varieties, Dundalk, that is Ireland now, has much more. Has much more of, you know, food right, stuff when it comes to African, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think this is because there is a lot of should I say, our people, black immigrants in Ireland. So this takes me to the next point now, which is the easiest pathway to move to. Is it UK? Is it Ireland? From all what I'm saying now, you could immediately tell that Ireland should have more of, you know, diverse culture, more people from different places, Africa, and, you know, not necessarily Irish people. But in Ireland, to be honest, where I stay, you know, I was, I and my family was the only black people to this old visa stuff, skibuka visa stuff, you know, people said they come in small, small. And yet, you could still count them 
which they are not even up to eight people. So for you, Dublin, I want Dublin. <laughs> so what do you, um, you know, what, what's your take about the immigration stuff in Ireland? Is it, is it a very easy place to move to and rest? To be honest, um, if you're coming by a school, yes, it's easy. Yeah. If you're coming by a school, it's easy as long as you have the funds for it, as long as you know what you're doing, how to apply, mm -hmm. and everything. It's sort of a straightforward journey. Um, but if you're coming via work, it's not as easy as the school route, but it's also possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people here that have come, even like via like the skilled worker visa you're talking of. I've mm -hmm. interviewed at least one person that came all the way from Nigeria to work in Deloitte, and also like healthcare assistants as well that have also been brought in mostly from like Kenya, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, mm -hmm. and just a few of them. I don't know why there are not a lot of Nigerians that are coming mm -hmm. via the healthcare route but there are lots of like kenyans and zimbabwe and south africans you know indians brazilians and the likes um but yeah but we work is not as easy but it's possible okay it's not as easy but with school it's actually like you know a straightforward journey in ireland here let's say in dublin where a lot of there are a lot of black people here like there mm -hmm. are actually like a lot a lot of us here like honestly a lot there's actually a lot of black people here and it's not it's nothing compared to like the amount of black people in the uk you know as far as you no know, the data that we have right now data and statistics to show mm -hmm. but ireland still had like a good number like you can walk on the streets from here to my junction mm -hmm. i'll probably see like five black wow. people you know the, the numbers are increasing over years like when i came here in 2019 I schooled in Cork, like in a different city, county in here in Ireland. And where there were black people, but not as much as. But when I came to Dublin, that's when I said to realize that, oh, there are actually like a lot of black people here in this country. I just didn't see mm -hmm. them because I was in a different county. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think with that, I think maybe that's me. Maybe if I'm living in Belfast or, you know, yeah, some of them. Yeah, Northern Ireland, yeah. Though there, there might be, you know, a lot of black people. But yeah. Because I, I kind of live in the countryside, not country, country, you know, but you can't compare where I stay now to to even a place like Belfast, what of London. You get what I'm trying to say? Okay. So now, with the student visa, are they allowed to bring their family? Because you must have heard what the UK is doing, all the back and forth, bus goes about, no dependent, oh, this and that. People are having panic attack. So this video is actually, you know, to let people know their option now. Most people think they can only go to the UK to study. And that gets me really pissed because there are other pathways, there are other countries that need you. That money you are bringing to the UK, carry it somewhere else, you know? So, Ria will be telling us if you could carry your family with you and the rest with the student study visa in um, Ireland. So, unfortunately, the same thing. Do you know? Wow. You can't actually, yeah. You can't actually come to Ireland with your dependents under a study visa. The only mm -hmm. pathway that that works is the skilled visa. So if you have like a job under the skilled visa, so for those that are into like IT, project management, nurses, medicine, midwifery, business analysts, social workers, like all of these very skilled jobs that they are looking for, if you get a job, definitely you can come with your dependents. But Ireland has always been like that, like, you know, wow. where you can't actually come. And that's very, it's very sad because a lot of people, when yeah. they ask me, I'm like, oh no, you can't actually come with your dependents, you know, for study. So it's very, it limits the amount of people that want to come here, you know, because most yeah. people actually want to travel with their family. They can't leave their families back home yes, now. Yes, ma'am. What's the need of going actually, abroad, carrying your exactly, family? Like that's the so purpose <laughs> of going abroad is to make a better life for my family. So exactly. Not bringing them like mm -hmm. you get. So yeah, but Ireland doesn't allow you come to the country to study with dependents. Sadly. Yeah. So in terms of the study visa. Island zero, UK zero for now. <laughs> you can do one, at least do one, at least generally. Yeah, okay, yes, yeah. one at least. That is, if you are coming, you know, to do your PhD, you can at least bring. But with the island, you can't even nothing at all. No matter what of course you want to come and study. Nah. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's so sad to hear. So, yeah. guys, <laughs> I know some of you are like, Clara! You know? <laughs> so, this is going to be like a summary now to really make your option easy to consider after this video if you want UK or you want to move to Ireland. So, living in Northern Ireland, like I said, I have access 
to move to another country. So when I'm counting the countries I've gone to, I always say, oh, I live in the UK, I go to Ireland, so that gives me the access. I don't even know if it's legal or illegal, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I always travel to Ireland to, you know, spend some time, months or so, without any immigration issue. Mm. But I don't know if the Republic of Ireland is the same. Can you come into Northern Ireland, being the UK, like that? What no, you would actually need like a visa, like a UK visa. If you have like a UK visa, you know, you can actually go into what's the word UK without how do I put it? Scrap that. You'd actually need a visa to actually get into UK or Northern Ireland or Belfast. You actually do need a visa. You can't just Ireland Ireland is a very it's a very how would I put it? I would say they're strict in what in like their laws and movement and everything, but they are different from like other European countries. You know, for example, like Ireland is not even part of like the Schengen area. It's not no. like a Schengen country. So if you even have like a Schengen visa, you can't even go to other countries. Sorry, you can only go to other countries if you have a Schengen visa. You know, so for example, I have friends that are in Poland. They can actually go to like let's say Germany or let's say Spain with just even their residency card without having a visa. Okay. You know, because that's part of the Schengen area. But in Ireland, you need to have a Schengen visa. To even go wow. to Germany, yes, because Ireland is, is, is an European country, yes, you know, it's it's in the UK. so uh, why would you be needing a visa yeah. to go from Sorry. one European country to another? That is, you need a visa now to go from Ireland to Germany, and yes, so that's, <laughs> that's funny, very. <laughs> so then I think my own is actually legal. I think what I, I'm doing is actually legal. Oh, I am going to post this video, so they will come back, so come back and charge me. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So guys, in terms of benefit now, I think Republic of Ireland is also very good. Before yeah. Ria, I've heard about the benefits in Republic of Ireland a lot of it. And she just confirmed it. I wanted her to say it, you know, not me saying it. So in terms of benefit, I would give Ireland one and UK zero. How would they give us six, six hundred pounds for the whole year? Meanwhile, the Republic of Ireland... <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. I, at least that's 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 still okay. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. God, I want to give you guys. Yeah, true. Anyways, but during COVID, did they give you guys money? No, 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 no. Ah, sorry. No. I, I think yeah. I think during COVID, they sent hundred pounds each individual. They sent hundred pounds one time Only. payment. One time for the whole year, you know. So now this cost of living six hundred pounds to buy gas for the whole year. Meanwhile, you you could get about you know six hundred pounds for two months and be paid like that. You know. So in terms of benefits, I'm, in fact, I'm giving Ireland one hundred. You know, and this will make me start packing my bag now to relocate to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> no time to waste. <laughs> but in terms of accommodation, now I think I will give it to the UK. Yeah. In, in Ireland, let me put it out there: getting accommodation is very hard. It's wow. ridiculous. Like, God, that's one thing that is that they struggle with in this country. I feel like if the accommodation crisis is settled, Ireland will be doing so much better when it comes to migration, you know, as an option for foreigners. Wow. The accommodation crisis here is ridiculous. Honestly, it's very bad. There are no houses. And even if you find, you for, like I said, like a studio currently, like if you just want to pay, you will mm -hmm. pay like one five, one six. That's like the well, that's that's If you come that to pound, that's after my salary now. Who Honestly, who is it? <laughs> Honestly like it's, it's ridiculous, I'm telling you. So that's one thing that I wouldn't give Ireland when it comes to accommodation. No, we don't we don't have it yet. We don't yeah. we don't have it yet. So Ireland zero in terms of accommodation, you yeah. kill one. So in terms of wages, I think I would also give it to Ireland because I've heard a lot of stuff. Oh Although, we, we, we yeah, they pay us yeah. more. Yeah, they pay you guys a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, the they minimum, the minimum lot. wage here in Ireland, like it increases. Like since I've been here for like the last three years now, it's been increasing like mm. almost all the time. So, wow. but for now, it's I think about eleven euros something per hour. That's what you have to, and that's like twelve something per hour or so as minimum wage in the UK, and that's the minimum wage that every company is required to pay you. And most yeah. times, companies don't like to pay minimum wage because it will be too low so they always start from let's say like 12 euros or 13 euros but ireland really pays well compared yeah. to the uk yeah they actually really pay well. mm -hmm. 
In terms of work job opportunity, I think I would give it to UK. I think you can really? have a broader, you know, job opportunity. You can look at the visas that are opening and launching almost every time. Bus, 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 you know? What do you think? Well, I don't know. Like, well, I would say it, it depends on it depends on the field mm -hmm. as well. When it comes to tech, IT, I'll give it Ireland. When it comes to job opportunities, Ireland is the IT hub of Europe. A lot of tech companies are actually here. But wow. maybe when it comes to like healthcare, I'll give it to the UK. UK. Yeah. UK. Wow. I, I, I think I think it's balanced. It just depends on like the sector, the career path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's what wow. I, I really enjoyed this conversation though. Funny enough, I don't even want this to end, but unfortunately <laughs> we need to end because this is about 30 minutes in. Yeah. You know? Oh gosh, I really enjoyed this to be honest, Ria. And I think we should yeah. do this one. Yeah. yeah. So guys, who who won? <laughs> Island one, one of you. I think it's Island, yeah. I was about to say, I think it's Island. Because can I say no accommodation? Accommodation is the most important, but at least yeah. they will give you something to carry on. If they're giving you and this the money, you know, good as well. Yeah. So that is, like, because the pay is good, that's why things, I would say, things are a little bit priced the way they are priced yeah. because your pay can somewhat afford it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I give it to the Island, and to me, benefit is everything. You know, like she said, even as a student, no query in, in terms of receiving some benefit. I don't know about yeah. all of them. Yeah, some you know, benefit. Really yeah. I, I really think you could even get one benefit that won't affect you later on in the long run. I want to about the when they keep record there. <clears throat> you yeah, go and take one small thing, it will come back to, to bite you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna give it to Highland. That is if you need any information, like when I mean Ubonga information. Free information about moving and relocating to the Republic of Ireland. Ria is your plug. Thank I'm you. telling you this. From <laughs> not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to big her up here, but from what I've seen, from all the testimonies I've seen, from all of our videos, like mm -hmm. she really dives in into researching before she brings this information to yeah. you. Go and subscribe. Not too much talk. Just go and subscribe <laughs> and take from Clara. <laughs> you know, I like all of our videos. Though. The name is Ria's Take, as written on the screen. So yeah. go and subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you so oh, much I for having me. Video. <laughs> <I> too. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.